Hi all, this is Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to paint this pretty mandala on a beautiful wood pebble. Now I got these wood pebbles, they're kind of organically shaped so they're not perfectly round. They more mimic a, a true stone shape. They've got a little variance in each one so that makes them really unique and pretty. And we're going to talk about how to finish the stone so you get a or the wood pebble so you get a beautiful background, nice warm rich wood tone and then how to paint this pretty design. Let's get started. So to get started with these, they are really, really smooth and have such a pretty grain, but they are machine tooled. So uh, particularly around kind of the edges, um, there are some tool marks that I want to get rid of because I really want my finish and my stain to take um, smoothly. So I am using a 100 grit sandpaper first to kind of do my first pass and then a 220 and a 400 to finish it up. You don't have to do this, it's just my personal preference. And then we've got these pretty stains. You can use uh, any kind of water-based stain that you like. And I'm saying water-based because we're using a water-based paint. Um, and I kind of like to keep everything consistent in terms of, you know, the base, the paint, and then what I'm going to varnish with if I'm going to varnish. Um, and so I want to keep everything water-based. Um, and then once I've sanded it, I'll just go ahead and apply these Deco Art gel stains. And I did find these in my local craft store, but you can also order them online. And these are meant to stain uh, to stain wood. So there's various colors here. There's a maple, an oak, and a walnut. And you can see that they're just different tones of brown. And what I'll do is actually apply them to stain the, um, the wood. There's also a staining antiquing medium that you can use then with any color. And I'll show a little uh, sample of that. Here's it, here it is with some purple multi-surface paint. And I thought that was really pretty. So the way to stain these is very, very simple. Um, of course, I've got a little... Um, paper down to protect my surface, my table, and then I'm using just a cosmetic sponge to apply that gel to the surface. Uh, you want to do this fairly quickly because you do want to wipe off any excess gel so you get a nice even coat. And I just used a paper towel to wipe off the excess. So I did uh, the f one side and then I'll turn this over and do the other side. And just get all that excess off. and already I'm getting a nice pretty stain to that wood. And then I'll turn it over, do the edges, put a little bit more. And I'm using the walnut here. This is the deepest color, the darkest. It's pretty much a dark brown, more black brown. And get it applied as evenly as I can. You can see that you don't have to use a lot, but I, I am going to use several different um, layers of this to get the richness of the color that I'm looking for. I want to show you already just with one uh, coat how that uh, difference is with the original uh, raw wood. And then I'm going to keep applying different colors. I actually mixed my colors a little bit. I did use some of the oak and some of the maple to get uh, the richness of tone. And isn't this gorgeous? I just love the way that looks. It's so pretty. And it's a deep, rich uh, wood color. And that's really what I wanted in order to um, have a nice background. All right, so here's the fun part. I actually am going to do a giveaway. So I'm going to give away one of these pebbles, just one and it'll be a blank pebble and you can paint it and stain it however you wish and stay tuned and look in the description below uh, I'll offer this on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube and so all of the details for the giveaway will be included. These are the colors that I'm going to be using. I'll be using Canyon Orange, Indian Turquoise, True Ochre and Cranberry Wine. Um, those are the colors I'll be using in the painting. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using my regular tool set, my nail dotters, and my Crystallite's crochet hooks. Use whatever tools you, you need to use or you have that you enjoy. And then I'm just using my chalk pencil to put a center, and I'm just eyeballing this, uh, and uh, get my, my center placement. And that's really all I need to get started is the center. So starting with my P16, 
that's the P16 11.5 millimeter. I'll place my center dot with the orange. And then I'm going in with my G6 4 millimeter north, south, east, west to get my dots, eight dots around. This is an eight segment mandala. And I'm using the true ochre, ochre and just get those down. I love the way the colors are looking on this. Go in with a nail dotter and just drop a little bit of orange between those yellow dots. Use the size of nail dotter that works for your spacing. I did want to smooth out my center dot a little bit, so I just dropped a little extra paint there and smoothed it with a nail dotter. I'm going in with the Cranberry Wine, and I'm using my H8 5 millimeter, and just placing those dots right above the yellow ochre dots. Now I'm using my nail dotter and that Indian turquoise and going around my uh, cranberry wine dots. I love the way this turquoise looks on the wood. Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. And we'll just walk all the way around. One thing I want to, you to notice is I am going to go back uh, with my nail dotter at one point because uh, I can only go so far with this particular size tool. And we'll just keep walking around. That color is just popping right off the wood. And now I'm going back in, as I mentioned, with just a smaller tool to kind of fill in some of those places that I didn't think I could get to comfortably with the size of tool I was using. So I'll just fill in a little extra. Close those up. And I'll just add a little of the turquoise to fill in some of that space between the main orange dot and the yellow ochre dots. Okay, now I'm going in with my K10.5, 6.5 millimeter and adding some more yellow ochre right in between that line of petals that I just, that row of petals I just put down. and use my G6 four millimeter to place some orange right at the center of those turquoise. That turquoise, those turquoise petals. And you could really do this step however you wanted. If you wanted to do um, the yellow ochre and then um, walk your dots and then put your orange in, you certainly can do that. Now I'm going in with the turquoise again and walking the dots. I'm using a, a smaller tool this time to walk the turquoise around the um, yellow ochre. And you'll see I made a mistake here and I actually walked around the orange so I've got to go back and clean that up and I wanted to show this because I did just use the my technique of uh, cotton swab to clean that up 
and get as much of that pain off as I can. And um, I did take a little bit of the, uh, the, the stain from the, uh, the original stain from the background, but that's okay. I just redotted it. It'll get covered up, so uh, it's not a problem. But if I needed to, I could go back because that's a water-based stain, and I'm using all water-based paints here. I could go back in and use a little Q-tip to add dab a little bit more on if I needed to replenish or recolor that particular spot. Um, but I wanted to show you that I can take off a mistake. So just keep dotting around those yellow ochre. I'm loving this turquoise. Truly popping right off of this pebble. And I'll drop a little bit of the cranberry wine in these uh, little spaces, the little V's that I have right below the yellow ochre dot just to fill in a little bit of space and add a little extra color. And now I'm back with a cranberry wine and a small nail dotter. And I'll walk dots around those orange, just a few. I didn't like that sort of the way that looked, so I'll take a little of that off. And then just redot it. Adding a little bit of yellow ochre, two dots on either side of that orange and other side of the previous turquoise dots add some additional color and pattern. These colors are pretty. I, you know, I, I'm from the Southwest and um, I gravitate towards these colors a lot. These remind me of of um, of those col you know southwest type colors. All right, now I'm going to go in and put a row of orange, and I'll just walk the dots right around that last row. Again, using a nail dotter. Now I'm going in with my G6 4mm and I'm going to put some crowns on each one of these segments here with the orange dot and just drop three large crowns there, crown dots.
and then I'll use a smaller nail dotter and walk just a few dots around to finish up that row. Sometimes two, sometimes three, sometimes four, depending on what my spacing was like. Don't be um, too rigid about that. You know, you, you're you not always going to get necessarily the same number of dots on each on each side. It took me a long time to kind of forgive the forgive that a little bit so that it wasn't always exactly spaced. But when you look at the overall design, it's difficult to tell unless you're counting. And who wants to look that hard, right? <laughs> and then a little a little dot at the edge of each one of those crowns. Now I'll go in uh, and drop a cranberry wine. This is with the K 10.5, 6.5 millimeter. And I'll just drop a little bit of cranberry wine in that spot. You can see, look at the difference between the fresh paint and the drying paint. You'll see that there's quite a bit of difference. It, it's more of a, it's a dark, a darker, uh, a darker red. And I'll go in with a nail dotter and put another crown of three right above that cranberry wine. Aren't you loving how that wood is peeking through? It's just so pretty. You don't want to fill up every bit of space because you really do want to see the beauty of that wood. And I'm basically following the same pattern as I did with the previous larger crowns. Now I'll go in with a quite small tool and just walk the dots around to finish up that design element. And I'll put one little drop, one little dot at the top of those crowns. And there we go for the first round. It's really pretty. Now, I didn't um, film all of my top dotting, but you can see I just used um, the same colors. I didn't add introduce any new colors, and I just layered colors on. I'm putting my final rows of top dots on, and I'm just contrasting the colors, uh, overlaying different colors from the pattern and from the color palette that I chose. 
and trying to enhance the depth of the piece. I think, um, you know, you can choose to add top dots or not. It just depends on what you think your design calls for. And in this instance, I'm actually adding um, several, couple layers of top dots. And if you let your paint dry in between the top dotting, you're able to then take it off if you need to. Sometimes I get a little wonky, so I've got to take dots off. And again, you just decide how far you want to go with it. I want a turquoise to be kind of the standout in this particular piece. Um, so I'm adding quite a few top dots. And there it is. It's gorgeous. Oh, look at the glow of that wood. It is just so pretty. So it's finished all the way around, and it's just absolutely beautiful, I think. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Um, as always, I appreciate uh, you watching. So don't forget about the giveaway. Stay tuned. Wish you would subscribe. Uh, give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I really enjoy hearing from you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining me in my studio today. Take care.